you know, your book and, and in a lot of your interviews, you, you talk about the impacts that endocrine disrupting chemicals can have on boys in the womb. Uh, why are boys more susceptible to these impacts and, and how come women aren't? Um, that's such a great question. And I, I just want to mention that males are more fragile. It's, it's not what people think, you know, but if you look at the, um, the rate of stillbirth, you know, fetuses that die in the womb, it's higher for men, males. So, so males die at a faster rate from the moment of conception on probably. And if you look, of course, that the population over 80 or over 90, or, you know, there's a huge sex difference, you know, many, many more females. So um, some people have conjectured, and I think this, there is definitely something here, that the fact that females have two chromosomes, XX, and males have XY, means that there's the possibility of repair mm. for females that, that's not there for males. So, um, but I'm not a geneticist and we, you should get a geneticist on to talk about this. I think this is a fascinating, fascinating question, but we see in so many ways that males are more sensitive, not just to EDCs. I mean, after a, a serious, um, disaster, natural or man-made, whether it's 9-11 or whether it's the Kobe earthquake or whether it's something else, you look at the sex ratio and fewer males are born. Mm. It's like nature is saying, not right now, let's let's back off for a while and stop producing so many, you know, because this is a dangerous time. Um, it's It's a phenomenon that's well known in my field. Most people are not aware of it, but... Um, and we see with COVID that males are more sensitive, you know, um, and so it's true for endocrine disruptors as well. Um, it's, it's almost as if males have a strike against them from the moment of conception on. It's really hard to understand, but um, who knows why that is? <laughs> you know, that's a sort of a teleological question, but. But it is true often, not always, but often that the effect of chemicals that can alter the body's hormones impacts males more. Now, as far as the chemicals I studied the most, which is the chemicals in soft plastic and like phthalates, they um, have the ability to lower testosterone. So, so both males and females need testosterone but for males it's particularly important mm. right and it and it governs the development of the male reproductive system and also sex differences in the brain so if you're lowering this critical chemical at a critical time which is depending on the system for the reproductive it's early in pregnancy first trimester if you're messing with that signal then the male doesn't kind of get what he needs to fully masculinize. And that, that's, that's one of the reasons why, you know, I talk about this a lot because I study it um, and, um, you know, it influences actually the size of the genitals, which a lot of men care about. It influences testosterone in a way that continues. And we see, you know, problems with test falling testosterone worldwide, just as falling sperm counts worldwide, which is pretty scary. You have more and more young men coming in for testosterone replacement and being seen for ED. So this is, um, it's all, you know, that's all testosterone related. And so when you have deal with chemicals like phthalates that lower testosterone, you're messing with a pretty important system.